Hello and welcome to the Cisco Route CBT Nuggets series. My name is Jeremy Chara. I'll be hanging out with you throughout this entire series, which I'm really excited to get into because while this may be the very first nugget that you listen to of the series, and I hope it is, uh, this is actually the last one that I recorded for this entire series, so I know exactly how cool the series is that you're about to get into. What I wanted to do was take just a few minutes uh, to talk about Cisco certification because I know a lot of you are at least interested in that and moving forward forward and one of my goals is if you're not wanting to get certified it's to convince you to get certified it's awesome um, to to get Cisco certified talk about some of the benefits of that and really my other major goal is to talk about how you can get the most from this series unlike every other CBT Nuggets series I have some very unique recommendations for this one so come with me let's let's go through the whole Cisco certification process so before we get into understanding the Cisco certification track and, and all the details of it, let me first talk about Cisco certification in general. It is the most valuable certification, I can say personally, that I've gotten in my entire career. And I've been doing the certification trek for about 13 years. Um, 13 years ago, I actually got Microsoft MCSE certified in Windows NT. I know it's been a while. Uh, and I also got Novell certified in uh, Netware 4 and Netware 5, and that one doesn't do me much good nowadays. But nonetheless, I did it. And when you pass both those certifications, uh, you get a certificate in the mail from Microsoft or Novell, respectively, that says, hey, you are now uh, an MCSE or a CNE. And you, if they all send you, uh, it's like a laminated business card. It looks kind of like a something important but it's not really a plastic card that says you are an MCC you can like flash it if you get pulled over by the police or something um, it's it's not really useful but th it's now up to you they say okay you can now use these acronyms on your business card and your resume it's now up to you to go find a job um, which is great you know and back then I knew nothing different I was like oh this is pretty cool certification Cisco certification when I got certified of course you get the same uh, you know plaque, and uh, not a plaque, what a certificate and business card and things like that in the mail. But Cisco goes above and beyond and they actually incent companies to hire you. Meaning, unlike every other vendor that I've dealt with, Cisco actually goes out to companies and says, hey, you know what, here's, here's your price on our equipment, but you know what, if you were to hire X number of certified people or X number levels of certified people, you know, CCNA, CCNP, all those kinds of things, uh, we will give you this much off of the, the equipment. Uh, so much so, it's actually Cisco's partner uh, program to where, you know, anybody can come in and be a registered Cisco partner, but as you move up, you hire Cisco certified people, and you, l let me back off and say, you can't move up in their, in their partner process without hiring certified people. So what you are, end up with is companies that are looking for your certification to add to their, their staff because if they add you, and of course I'm sure they want you to be a, a good person as well, um, not just have the certification, but if they add you, they move up in their partner level with Cisco and they get significant discounts off of Cisco equipment. Very cool to have companies looking for you now instead of you just looking for them. Um, I, matter of fact, this, this became so significant uh, in years past, and they've put the kibosh on this, so you don't see it too much anymore. But they actually had problems with people who get their CCIE, the, meaning they go all the way with their Cisco certification, uh, would finish that, and they would hire on at a company, but not really work there. They would actually uh, assign their credentials, their CCIE credentials, to that organization, and you know make X number of thousand dollars a year um, to to say that they work there. But they would just go off and do independent consulting. Well, Cisco has definitely put the kibosh on that. But the point of that is, you can see just how valuable these certifications are. So, all that being said, go for Cisco certification. You can't go wrong. And let, me, let me talk to one more group of people. Uh, okay, so you work at a job, most of the time it's uh, working for the U.S. government, because they seem to be the, the worst at this, who say, yeah, you can get certified if you want, but uh, we don't do anything for you, other than, you know, a pat on the back, a Krispy Kreme donut, and a cup of coffee. You know, good job. Uh, to those people, I will say, you still got to do it. I mean, because first off, while while the the uh, job you're at may not value that your certification, and this goes for anybody, not just government, where they don't value certifications all that much. Um, think about the future and the doors and possibilities that could open for the future um, if you were to get those. So enough said. That <laughs> that's my my pitch in a nutshell. Why you should get Cisco certified. And I'm sure you've already read through all of the the bullets on the screen. That's why. 
Cisco certification is so valuable. They have been revising it over the years to become a very real world process. Now it's funny, when I think back to my initial Cisco certification, it was 10 years ago when I first got Cisco certified, I went through the entire CCNA and CCNP in a month. <laughs> now I know, I know you're probably going, wow, you must be really smart. No, no, actually not at all. I can say after that month and getting all those certifications, I knew probably just about as much of Cisco technology as I did before I did that. Maybe a little more, you know, a little more. I just happened to be a good book studier. I could pull out key facts and be like, oh, they're probably going to ask something on that. Highlight, highlight, highlight. And, you know, I, I was able to achieve it. If I were to do that nowadays, if I were to walk in with zero experience and try Cisco, there is no way I could pass even the CCNA exam uh, in a month. It's been that much of a change. Uh, may well, maybe a month. I, I'm like, I don't want to shoot myself down that low. But, uh, but the point is, it's been that much of a change uh, since the days of old when I originally got into Cisco uh, to, to now. I, everything is new. Everything's different. There's simulations. It's very real world. Essentially, they say you should not pass these exams unless you know what you're doing. And now you can see right here, I, you know, these are 2007, 2008 dates that you see up on the, on the screen. You might say, well, what's, what's going on in the modern time frame? Well, here we are, end of 2010, beginning of 2011. And they have completely revised the CCNP curriculum to now be uh, Cisco Route, Switch, and T-Shoot. And I can tell you, I've taken the Route exam, and if you, if you want a sneak peek at the very last nugget of this series, I talk about my experience with that exam. Um, wow, what a test. It is, it is an amazing exam uh, that, again, you will walk away from that thinking, okay, if I didn't know what I was doing, I would have not have passed that exam. It's, it's a very real world experiential exam. So let me talk about the track itself. You know, what's the best direction to go? You know, what's the best certification to get? I get that question a lot. Um, so at this point, you're, you're at Cisco Route, which first off, this series is not for mere mortals. <laughs> Meaning if you have not gone through the CCNA studies and, and understand where they're at, either gone through CBT Nuggets CCNA series or have an equivalent experience with CCNA, this, this series, I'm not going to say you'll be lost, but it'll be very difficult because I'm going to assume that you know a lot of stuff by the time you get here. But that's where everybody begins. Everybody starts off with CCENT and CCNA. Even if you're going in the direction of, uh, of voice or security, Cisco always wants you to have that foundation CCNA. It's, I guess you could call it the CCNA routing and switching uh, foundation under your belt so you really have a good grasp of the foundation of all Cisco networks. That's where you always begin. Now, statistically, most people will continue on here. And I would say even more so now that Cisco has revised the CCNP uh, track to be just three exams instead of four. It used to be four exams. You had BSCI, BCMSN, uh, TUC, no, see now it's all blending together. B BCMSN, BSCI, uh, ONT, Optimizing Networks, and... Uh, and oh, ISCW, uh, the uh, Converge WANs, uh, securing Converge WANs uh, networks. So, so they, they have gone away from the four exams and now they are, have boiled it down to just three, route, switch, and T-shoot. Now the first question is why'd they do that? Why did they make it, well, well I'll put quotes around it, easier to get your CCNP? Well, the truth is they didn't make it easier. They made it more focused. Over the years, all these different kinds of technology has come out, like voice over IP, security enhancements, video over IP. I mean, the world is changing. It always does. And just through attrition, we've started to see... Attrition wasn't the right word. I'll, I'll say leakage, if that's a better word. Um, just, just by leaking these technologies into the CCNP, uh, you start seeing... A lot of the a lot of the the CCMP original focus, which was routing and switching, uh, starting to blend into oh yeah, there's some quality of service. Oh yeah, there's some voice codecs that you're going to have to know. Oh yeah, there's you know there, there started to be all of this extra stuff in the CCMP to where it wasn't really a focus on routing and switching anymore. It ended up being a focus on all kinds of different technologies. So what they did when they revised it, you know, a lot of people might say, well, they made it easier. It's one less exam. Well, yes, it's one less exam. However the technology now goes much deeper than it ever did before. They've added a lot of depth. I think depth is the best word that I can use to describe it. Depth to all of the topics that used to be, they, they would touch and be like, oh yeah, yeah. if you want to know more about OSPF, uh, go see these web links and things like that. Or if you want to know more about EIGRP or BGP and all, all of these different things, go study here. Now they really take you there. They, when you leave CCNP, they want you to master uh, routing and switching. Likewise, 
when they announced the changes, I didn't believe it, but, but after seeing it, I do. They said, we want the CCNP to prepare people for the CCIE. Now the CCIE, first off, I'll, I'll throw a little statistic out there for you. This guy down here, only 2% of people who have ever passed a Cisco certification exam, meaning somebody maybe has gotten a CCNT or something like that, 2% of people ever go on to even attempt the CCIE. So it's a very select group of people that even try to get the CCIE because it's a very difficult exam that you have to go after. And the reason, one of the reasons for that is because people would take the CCNP and then they would look at exactly what they have to know for the CCIE and they would just go, no way, no way. Do I, would I even have a, a chance to know that much depth? You know, <laughs> and if you ask somebody, if you've, if you've, uh, asked this question before to somebody and you say, so what do you have to know for the CCIE? What's, what's the answer that you hear? everything. <laughs> they always, that's always the answer from Cisco, from everybody. They always say, you got to know everything to get the CCIE. Well, that's not true. You don't really need to know everything. And there's a lot of, you know, fear around that whole exam simply because nothing prepared you for it moving up to it. Now it does. The CCNP is now a natural transition into the CCIE routing and switching. So much so that when I was going through and I was recording this series, I thought, you know what, this is hilarious. I wish I would have, <laughs> I wish I would have had me, right? I wish I would have had me six years ago when I got my CCIE because I would have been really helpful to, to explain a lot of these things. And a lot of the concepts that I remember from the CCIE exam have now bled into the CCNP. And I'm just thinking, wow, that's, it's just amazing. You know, everything's being enhanced. The curve to get into this industry is, is amazing. I, you know, I've, <laughs> I, I saying this, I feel bad for, for people that just are getting started into the Cisco realm because it was so much easier for me a decade ago when I first got into it to get started than it is now just because the, the technology has become so rich and so deep. Um, now, a couple of the logistics. Each exam has an expiration of three years, but don't let that scare you. Uh, yes, they do expire after three years, but Cisco makes it very easy to renew your exam. Meaning, let's say you get a CCNA. Uh, you, you have that certification for three years. Now, when three years is coming up, you can either take that one exam again and get another CCNA for three years, or you can move on in your studies. Let's say you, you pass the CCNA security, CCNA voice, or maybe you take one of the CCNP exams and pass. It automatically renews everything below it. So, so for example, you get a CCNA voice that now lasts for three years, and this gets a fresh three years on it as well. So let, we're talking about route right here. So let's say you take this route exam and pass it. That means your existing CCNA and your CCNT get a fresh three years, and now you have three years on this uh, before, before that, that route exam expires. So you, you pass switch. You now have three years, and this gets a fresh three years. Now, it's not additive. It's not like you can keep taking it and be like, oh, yeah, I've got a CCNA that lasts for 20 years <laughs> with all the exams I've taken. Not true. It just gets a fresh three years every time. Uh, let me just give you, give you a, a summary of this. I actually have at this point a CCVP, a CCNP, a CCSP, um, a CCIE routing and switching. I have some other Cisco design certifications not even shown here, some wireless certifications. Um, but I actually, every two years, I, the CCIE you have to retest every two years. And don't worry, you don't have to take the lab exam. You just retake the written. But every two years, I go in and pass my one exam. It automatically renews my CCIE for another two years and every other certification I have for three years beyond that. So it, otherwise, it, without this policy, I would be taking exams every day just to keep them all current. It also, I want to make sure I, I emphasize this, it goes sideways as well. So let's say you've got a th CCNP, you've passed all three exams, and then you get into the CCVP, uh, pass one exam from here, and you automatically renew your CCNP for three years. Isn't that awesome? Cisco wanted to make sure you don't spend your time reviewing stuff you already know. They want you to get into new stuff, and that's, that's why that recertification policy is, is so cool. So the last thing I want to talk with you about before I let you into the series is how you can get the most from this CBT Nuggets series. Cisco route. First and foremost, repetition. There's scientific facts out there, n numerous, that say if you just hear something one time, you've instantly forgot it. That's essentially what it's saying. In today's attention deficit world where everything's pulling for your attention, it's impossible to hear, remember things that you hear one time. So go through it again and again and again. Repeat it. Um, that's one of the beauties of CBT Nuggets is you've got me on TiVo. Just rewind me and listen to me a second time. Um, second thing, take notes. Write down key information that you hear. Say things out loud. Uh, one of the things I've been doing lately is, uh, is CBT Nuggets actually has an iPhone application, which I have found to be an amazing product to have sitting in my 
my car. I've been getting into a lot of the, the Windows...